Boris, welcome back, my friend. How are you today? I'm doing awesome. Sorry I missed you earlier. I did I lost track of time. That's on me. I'm sorry. I was in a I had no the PFL worries. here filming and so I apologize. No, you don't need to apologize. That's that's fine, my friend. I, I understand that you know uh it's almost fighting week. You are you know, fighters are pretty busy during uh these days, so no worries, that's completely fine. So what did you do with the, the PFL crew? Um, I did my last lifting session. Mm. My last lifting session, almost like an active recovery session. You know, we had a hard week. Um, shit, Gordon Ryan was out here. I got to, Ooh. I got to learn some stuff from Gordon Ryan, and it's been an excellent week, man. It's been an excellent week. So, um, you know, a couple final final touches on on what we're doing for the fight, the game plan, and uh. Yeah, man. I'm just now. It's this time. Every time I see fights, it's like, ooh, I get to do that. And like, <laughs> like a week from today, actually, I'll be sitting in my hotel, probably sleeping in my hotel room, getting ready to check in in a couple hours. I'm assuming. You mentioned that Gordo Ryan was there. May I ask you what did you guys do together? Whether you do something together, and what is it that uh, he showed you or you captured from him? Um, I'll be honest with you. He taught class for us. Um, and he just taught, taught us some real useful, useful series is what I'd call it a series. Um, and what he happened to be teaching was something that will prove to be very useful for me next Friday night. If we get in, in the jujitsu realm, you know, uh, I think a lot of people sleep on my jujitsu. They forget I got six wins by submission. Um, which is more than my my knockouts. Uh, so and uh, Ran Ran is a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu black belt. Um, like I said many times, I don't know who the fuck gave him his black belt, or maybe he went to Macy's and bought a black belt for his jeans, and and he's saying he's a black belt. But I guess we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> and you're right. You have a point there. You actually have double the submissions than your uh, KO finishes so that that is a point you know you have six finishes by submission and uh, three knockouts or TKO so again you have a point over there may I ask you your favorite submission maneuver my favorite submission yes sir definitely a uh, arm triangle by arm triangle or triangle with my legs it's more that's pretty much all my submissions <laughs> Literally, my submissions are arm triangle, or a tri uh, just a classic triangle. You know, I I was the first person to finish. No, sorry, I'm the second heavyweight to finish a fight by arm triangle because Stefan Struve did it twice in the UFC. So I'm in the record books there, and I'm the second athlete in the UFC to finish arm triangle from my back, and the only other person to do that is Al Jermaine Sterling. So, you know, I know what his game plan probably is. He thinks he's gonna finish me, but. Um, you know, a lot of people ask me, you know, he's a finisher. What are you going to do? Aren't they all finishers when I fight him? Wasn't Goats off a finisher? Was it uh, Ante a finisher? You know, um, like I've said a million times, I'm just right at the top of the hill. It's time to get over that hump. Um, you know, I fell short when it's time to get over that hump. Uh, I'm not going to do it again. And don't let these fool you now. I smoke organic cigarettes, okay? I was actually, I was curious and I was waiting for the right moment to ask you about that, whether that impacts your cardio. But again, I was waiting for the right moment. So what is it that you would like to share with us about your... It does. Uh... <laughs> Listen, if I if I was to tell you it doesn't impact my cardio, I'd be a fool, all right? Does it impact my cardio? Yes. But I work harder than the average bear on my cardio. You know, I swim. I swim a couple times a week, and I have been since, shit, since we thought John was going to fight Stipe last year, last December, we started swimming. And I've been swimming for over a year, multiple, two to three times a week, you know. And uh, my cigarettes, this is the difference. This is my tobacco. I buy a whole leaf from a tobacco farm, so I don't get all the extra. Like if I smoke a pack of cigarettes, like from the store, I'll be coughing the next day with a sore throat and all that shit. These don't give me that, nor do I have uh, 
when I when I decide to stop, I don't have the Joneses. You know how you get? I need a cigarette. These are not like that. Um, but I, you know, you look at the ties, right? You look at a guy in Thailand. They smoke like fucking chimneys. <laughs> they smoke like chimneys. They do. Um, it's just one of those things where you just get it done, man. You just get it done. You know, I'm I'm not a young man in this game anymore. You know, I've been in the game for closing in on 14 years. You know, and um. I know myself, I've been smoking for 14 years that I've been in the game, you know, um, not to say that that's cool or anything, but, you know, everybody got to have their vice, you know, and that's, that's, that's my vice, unfortunately. <laughs> you, you have a point there again, you have a point. So your opponent is going to be taller than you just by a couple of uh, actually just one by inch one inch one, one inch. inch yes just one inch uh is this the first time you're facing a, a taller opponent no nah, i fought for glory kickboxing and in glory kickboxing those heavyweights are big boys those heavyweights are big boys that can put their put their leg right here he's a big boy he can put his leg right there you know it's it's not, it's nothing new for me However, it may be new for him. Oh. You know, he does a lot of he does a lot of things in his fight that kind of favor him with shorter fighters that are six three, maybe six four, you know, um, that are not favorable for guys like me, you know. He does have a significant reach advantage, right? We're looking at 85 inches versus what like 81 and a half or 82 I am, something like that. Um but then again, I go back to I train with John Jones, who has an 84 and a half inch reach, and he uses every bit of that 84 and a half inch reach better than anybody else in the game. So um, it's, not, it's not like it's anything I haven't seen before. You know, um, when you get in there, if I get hit, you know, which I'm going to get hit, but if I if he starts catching me, I have to make those adjustments, right? Just like when I'm when I'm working with John and John's hitting me, which he hits like a fucking truck, I have to make those adjustments, right? And with John, it's hard to make those adjustments because as I'm making adjustments, he's making adjustments in the moment. Way faster than I'm making adjustments. Let's put it that way. That's what happens when you train with the greatest of all time. So um, I know Ran Ran is not that, okay? Um, He's not as technically sound as John is. Does he hit hard? Yeah, we all hit hard. You know, the difference between me back then and me now is fucking a weight room. You know, I've been in the weight room this whole season. And unfortunately for Ran Ran, he's catching me, uh, catching me not just getting in the weight room. I've been in the weight room. So um, I'm curious to see how strong he really is because I don't, I don't see much muscle on him. You know, he's in shape. He, he got a physique to him, but I don't see no muscle on that physique. Um, and if he can't hit you on the end of his punches where really the power lies, you know, if you're not running because he can't hit you on the end of your punches and you're right there in his face, we're, we need to see how he's going to react when there's somebody right there in his face. Because um, the reality is the more I back up, uh, the better his chances are of hitting me on the end of his punches. So I guess we're going to see, man. I'm going to bite down on the mouthpiece and, um, you know, step in the line of fire, you know. I'm going to fight fire with fire and good technique. You know, you look at my last fight, and, and a lot of people say this. You look at my last fight, I yeah. ducked I duck my head, and I turn and ram. I'm, I can't do that against him. You can't do that with somebody who has an 85-inch reach. You can't do that. You just yeah. can't do those type of things, right? Why would I do it against Ante? Because Ante was much shorter. I knew I could get away with it, right? Why does he do it with other fighters? Because he knows he can get away with that shit, right? He may make those adjustments too, but I doubt it. How do you make those adjustments when you're finishing everybody? How? You tell me. I just don't know how, you know? How do we get better? We get better in a loss. We really get better in a loss. A lot of guys don't get better uh, when they're winning, you know. Um, although I did see when he fought, when he fought, uh, when he fought Rizvan, he did a really good job at 
well, until he got tired. But he did a really good job at, uh, you know, not not accepting the the position and trying to work, right? Which I expect him to do that early, really good, you know. Um, I expect him to do it early, really good. But how long can he do that for is what is my question. You know, how much gas does he have in the tank? You know, I, I sleep at 6,100 feet above sea level. I sleep every night um, in air, okay? I work. I, I run up here in these foothills. Um, he's over there in Florida at sea level. Mm -hmm. You know, that's going to that, that's gonna make a difference. Do, do you think I'm that will, I'm coming do, do you think that will be a factor in your fight? You know, the, the difference in training? And the in the altitude, yes. Shit, last year when I fought Goldsoft, you saw it. Goldsoft was dirt tired. He beat my ass. He did, but that motherfucker was dirt tired when we got done. You know, I'm a different type of animal in 2023. You know, um, unfortunately, I made the decision to lay down my last fight because I thought I was winning. I thought I was gonna get my hand raised. That, as you can see, I was dancing after the fight. I really thought I was winning. I didn't see. I didn't. I didn't see in the second round that I got knocked down. I knew I tripped and I take through a punch, but that punch is not what dropped me. I tripped trying to trying to move laterally and uh, I popped right back up to my feet. But that was scored as a knockdown. And that was very significant in the fight. That was something that was very, very, very significant in the fight. Um, and it was just a miscalculation. I have no time for miscalculations this time, you know. Uh, we're going to put our best foot forward. We're going to bite down on the mouthpiece and we're going to put on a show for these fans. I'm pretty sure you see yourself as the winner of your matchup with uh, Henan. But how do you see the other matchup in the heavyweight playoffs, uh, you know, going down? Like, uh, how do you see the fight between Dennis Goldsov and Jordan uh, Heiderman uh, playing out? I got to be honest, I like Heiderman, man. I like him. I like him. I like him. You know, we're the only two Americans left. You know, I would love to have a USA, USA um, championship, you know. Uh, but Goldsoft's a tough motherfucker, you know. I spent 15 minutes with that man in the cage, and um, he's he's good, man. He's good. It can go either way, I feel like. I'm sure the general public thinks Goldsoft, because of his experience, is going to run through Heiderman. Um But I'm one of those guys where, you know, when I fought for glory kickboxing, man, I was, I was fighting guys with 50 fights with six kickboxing bouts, you know? Um, and it was competitive, you know? At least at least the fight against Cat Catalan Morosano was competitive. Um, with, with Anderson Silva, Anderson Braddock Silva, it was... Um, You know, he schooled me, but I was in, I was there. When the going got tough, I was still there. You know, I had every reason not to get up after the second round when my legs were trashed and I stood back up. And he won a, he won a unanimous decision. But, you know, I, I learned a lot about myself in, in that moment. So um, it depends on if Jordan hired him. I, and I think he is. I think he has it in him to do one of two things. Either win that fight. Or give Goldsoft a tough ass time. So going into the championship, Goldsoft's a little hurt, a little battered. And it's not it's not gonna just be a cakewalk into the championship. Because let's be honest, Goldsoft, he was able to finish two guys really early. You know, he's sitting pretty, he's feeling good. <clears throat> And I would love a healthy Goldsoft. But shit, if he could be a little beat up, I'll take a little beat up, Goldsoft. You know, I want that back. I want that fight back. You know, I was drinking the week before in Arizona, all types of stupid shit before that fight. Um, but I'm not doing that shit now. You know, um, I'm probably more dedicated to my craft than ever. You know, um, yeah, I, I, you know, yeah, I just, if I had to put money on it, man, I want America, USA versus USA. I want to, I would like to see Heiderman win that fight, uh, which the young man can do it. You know, the young man can do it. He got that going in him. Yeah. I recall uh, you mentioning that you would like to, fa to face uh, Goldsov again in your career in our latest interview. So hopefully you will get 
your uh, wish granted. Maurice, thank you very much for giving us a little bit of your time today. Best of luck with your upcoming fight. And hopefully I will hear again uh, from you before the final. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Sorry for my tardiness again. Again, no worries. Have a nice day, my no friend. Bye-bye. Have, Have a great on. weekend, brother. Bye. Yeah.